Whew. So I've come back to Steepney Peter. I've been here several times before. I've posted several vlogs before. Now I'm inspired to come here by a chap whose vlog I recently saw. I do apologise, I've been saying your name all the way up. But now I've arrived, I've forgotten it. This is the guy here. Now this is going to be a blatant copy of his compositions and I make no excuses at all. Just a, a thank you for inspiring me. Now I've been here lots of times and I've been down low, I've been under the pier, but I've never actually been on top of it. Now I purposely arrived here at high tide because I'm after some very long exposures. I want the water to be as flat as I can possibly get it, which will probably involve lots and lots of filtration. They're going to be minimal. The sky is cloudy, so I will be using various post-processing techniques to get rid of the sky. One thing I've started to do is use Gaussian blurs to at around 800 to 1000 to really absolutely blur out the sky and using layers to to remove the detail from the sky i don't recall seeing the the, the gap or the height between the sand and the pier so i googled last night and the gap appeared to be quite shallow but now i've arrived it's probably 10 foot there are a couple of stones which I've augmented with more stones. There are no more to add on, so I'm going to have to really work out how to get up there. There's a hook that I can use the carabiners to attach my bag to, to get up. And there's a pole I can use to stand on. So let's hope I get up there, because I'm going to get up there by hook or by bloody crook. Oof. Well, that was a lot easier than I expected. I thought anyway, something's going to go wrong, but popped it back on the carabiner, popped it on the hook, stood on a rock, popped up, job done. Wow, it's uh, this is awesome being up here. Really is. Somebody's carved the name down there, Kate. No date on it, unfortunately. So it's. Oh, wow. Let's start off with the downsides. It's very, very harshly sidely. I saw a vlog years ago of a guy who did a drone shot right from the very start of the pier, right down to the end, and he turned right. He scared the bejesus out of some pigeons that were on the end. So the, the pier is probably level or just above the horizon and there are several boats out there which will be removed. Yeah, I am actually going to like this very much. I feel everything's going to be centrally composed. There's going to be no rules of thirds on the left or on the right. It's yeah, 20 past nine. It's probably a couple of hours before the sun is at its peak, but it's probably not gonna get much harsher than it is. It's absolutely no clouds where the sun is. That could work, that could really add to the contrast because I do want a high contrast focal point. That is the pier. I want to clap to get rid of the pigeons, but it seems unfair. Yeah, it's extremely safe. That said, I did walk down on top of the upright columns. Yeah, this is lovely. Centrally composed. Various heights. Yeah. Again, high tides, not for another 40 minutes yet. So camera's levelled off. I'm extremely conscious of the edges and I'm more conscious of the gaps 
between the floorboards because if anything goes through there it ain't coming back so it will be a case of triple checking everything just check my settings before I set off ISO 200, ISO 2.8, I can change that afterwards. Bent cap in the back. So a firm grip on the camera. Alright, that's in. That's locked off. Don't let go. I always have one hand on the camera. Firmly locked off. Now I've actually left it on mono. So I'm going to show it F. Go F11 because I want to get me slow show speed. So F11. Exposing the spot metering for the highlights. I've got a little exposed by one. I've got 200 of a second. I'll take a photograph, see what that looks like. Because I don't actually mind the sky being blown out. Cause it's gonna go anywhere, anywhere. I want to make sure I'm centered. Make sure the tripod legs don't go down any of the holes. Yeah, the I am showing some loss of detail in the shadow, but that doesn't matter. Triple check, everything is locked off. So I'm actually at 24 mil. F11. ISO 200, test shot, look at the uh, Instagram, there's, well in the in-camera Instagram there's, um, there's some underexposed, I've lost all detail in the shadows and there's a huge peak on the left and a huge peak on the right, but no clipping. I usually do a couple of things at a time, but I usually have a couple of things in my hand at, at each time, but because I'm up here it's one thing at a time. Yep, everything on. Triple check. Add another stop. If needed. Again, two hands on the filter. Level. How to do? I don't do many of these talk throughs. I use the viewfinder. Let's have a look. Look. Yeah, almost. Yeah. Six seconds. Level the camera, triple check, six seconds. Excuse my back, I'm gonna to have to shelter the filters. Wow, that is a difficult one to expose for. The sky isn't gone, but there's no detail in the shadows. I'll move you around here. I'm conscious though that you will be shooting, this video will be straight into the sun. Yeah, a bit better. I should not see me back. Have a look at that. Oh, it's kind of exciting being up here. Shelter the filter again. Oh, there's a cormorant just, no, it's not cormorant, it's a pigeon. It's a pigeon just sat there right on the left hand tube. And it's moving. Oh, there's two. Male and female. Now the male's going mental doing his preening prawns. I'm actually finished. This is extremely strange because there's not an awful lot to photograph. Essentially, you've got the the pier, the sky which is going to be blown out, the sea which is going to be flat. A couple of photographs done. I will review my photograph to make sure uh, they're in focus. They're correctly exposed, they're composed well. I can crop or recompose in post processing should I need, but if you do that, you are obviously losing pixels and losing data. Let's have a quick look. Now, could I do anything else? 
could I be a bit more creative? That is why you use a lens hood or shelter your filters. I'll take a single image just to show you the lens flare without my hand. Now I know I'm teaching granny how to suck eggs but you never know one of my few hundred subscribers might learn something. So there should be huge lens flare spots on the left hand side which they are. So that's with out shield, shield, shielding it and this is with shielding it. That is absolutely amazing. Without sheltering the filters, huge spots with sheltering the filter. Again, same exposure, same focal length, same aperture before and after, as you can see now. That is how you can absolutely ruin a photograph. Forget the walk in, take two. Bloody hell, I've got to send this on an audio one. <coughs> so, as I've just said, I'm not going to take any more photographs. Why? Because nothing I can take from this vantage point on the sand will be anywhere near what I've already photographed from here at sunrise, high tide gorgeous sky so there's no point in taking the photograph if I could learn some kind of technique I take some photographs but there's nothing I can do to improve my photography skills I might actually go home I can be home for 12 o'clock that's been an absolutely cracking trip I think they're going to work out well they will take a bit of a post process to get rid of the sky and the horizon very much Neil Burnell style but he hadn't done this one yeah or an absolutely awesome meet it's not been a meet meet a meet what an awesome meet with myself as I said up there I will be going back here I'll be coming back here at optimum times when high tide converges with sunrise for some nice light so for now guys I'll see you